Welcome back to another episode of Every Effect Explained in Adobe Premiere Pro. In this episode of the playlist, we're going to be taking a look at the Film Impact Motion Effects section. We have eight effects in here. A lot of these are on text or logos, but I'm going to show you some different examples for each. So this first example is the 3D Rotate Effects. If I drag this onto my clip, just as the title says, we can get a 3D rotation. Well, it's not super 3D, but it turns 2D into 3D. And we've got a few different options here. So in my case, I've actually used this pre-transform section because the original logo was pretty big. So I applied a pre-scale, lowered it down to the size that I needed. You can adjust the axis and the rotation and it'll spin around this 3D plane that you make. You have some options for changing the backside. So if you wanted to make the backside have a little bit of color or different gloss to it, or flip it vertical, or let's say you want a, a double-sided sticker, but this one is pretty self-explanatory, and a lot of these are. But let me show you the next one. It's called Camera Shake Effects. So this one allows us, just as the title says, to get camera shake effects. This is the earthquake mode, but let's say we can do a one-handed, this just is some slight motion, just to show you what this shot looks like that we're working with. It's just a still sort of tripod frame shot, no motion. But if we add this camera shake, we can get some camera motion. You can adjust the parameters of all these. So the strafe and the stride, kind of like left, right, up and down of it. And as all of these, there's this surprise me button, which can show you the different variation of crazy results you can get. Or there's the start fresh button, which just starts you back to nothing. The next one and two are called grow effects. So again, same clip, but if I apply the grow effect, it's a nice way to gradually scale up throughout the entire duration of the clip giving us motion, let's say you're doing a slideshow or adding motion to still shots like this. It can be a very useful effect. You can adjust the sort of speed of it so it can start gradually and then as the clip ends, you know, ease into it or ease out of it. But basically you have here the initial scale, which is gonna be 100 and the amount per second that you want it to grow. So 5% per second or, you know, 1% per second. And this will give you throughout the entire clip a 1% growth of the scale per second. Just like in all of these, instead of continuous, you can choose destination. So if you want it to just go from 100% scale to 200% scale at the end of the clip, by the end of it, you can do it that way as well. So this is what that would look like. And although there is this reverse direction button, which lets you go from scaled in to out, there's also just the preset shrink effects, which I guess is a little redundant, but Basically, maybe it's more useful to just have it this way without having to click reverse. But it's basically the same thing, uh, but backwards. So the next one is called move effects, and this is in the same vein of all of these. This one will just gradually move your clip in whatever direction you choose throughout the duration of the clip continuously. So I have an example here with the logo and text, but let's just say we have this text and I add the move effects onto it. I can choose a continuous movement in whatever direction I want. Let's say I want it to slowly slide to the right at a five speed and press play. It'll just gradually slide to the right as long as the clip plays. So let's say I change it to destination mode. I can choose the initial position and then the target position. And if I press play, it'll slowly move from our initial position to our target position across the entirety of the clip. And as all of these, you have these ease curve options. So if you didn't want it to be directly zooming in or out, let's say you're doing a lower thirds or something, you can make it gradually move and then gradually ease into the final position. The next one we have is called spacer effects. This one's pretty cool. It will just space each letter in your text and you can do it in horizontal or vertical ways. If I go into the effect controls here, there's actually a lot of cool things you can do with the curve graph. So, so you can have your normal sort of linear curve, or you can choose things like pulse. And in this one, you can sort of make loops. They go up and back and forth. We basically have the initial spacing amount. We can keep it continuous or destination mode as we've been seeing. We can choose the direction, horizontal, vertical, or radial. For radial mode, I'll actually show you with this circular PNG logo thing. If you change it to radial, it'll automatically detect these separations in this image, and I can radially expand things and animate them this way. This is what it looks like, vertical, horizontal. So not only can these work for animating text, but they also add space between logos like this. 
And for any of these, if you wanted to start fresh on just one parameter, you can click this reset parameter button. And then you also have this variation amount. So this is like some variation between each letter. You can mess with the anchor point a little bit. And if you wanted it to kind of loop back and forth, you can choose the pulse mode and it'll just gradually go up and down that loop. You can even change the frequency so you can get multiple loops in the same time frame. Kind of cool. And this can be an interesting sort of After Effects like way to animate text in Premiere Pro. The next one we have is spin effects. And this is going to be similar to what we've been working with with a lot of these. Here it is on a logo as well. So you can just spin things around. You can change the axis that it's spinning on. So if I go to the effect controls, you're always gonna have basically the curve in a lot of these, which is sort of like the speed or the motion of the animation. So you can ease in and out or loop that animation. In a lot of these, they also have these fun ones like bounce, which will like gradually get less and less in a bouncing way. But for this one, you have the spin amount. So it's degrees per second, you can do like eight degrees per second for a gentle spin. Then you have the anchor point as well, just kind of like the axis. If you ever see these blue crosshairs pop up in the program window, that can be an easy way to just click and drag the point that you want. And in a lot of these as well, there's this enable motion blur section, which can be nice to, if you're moving things very quickly, to get a little bit of motion blur. Lastly, and maybe one of the most useful ones, is the wiggle effect, which may be familiar, something you do in After Effects, but now you can just apply the wiggle effect on text, logos, whatever, even videos. I guess it's similar to that earthquake effect. But you can get animated uh, sort of random appearing motion on logos, text, or images. So here you have the motion controls. So basically the range of how horizontal it can wiggle, how vertical it can wiggle, sort of the range of motion it can go between. The wiggle speed, so faster for more jittery, less for softer. The spin range, if I don't want it to, to spin and sway so much, I can lower that. And I can get these gentle floating pop-ups. Now, if you ever create a wiggle that you like, you can always right click and save it as your own wiggle preset and name it. So you can have a specific wiggle types of your own and build off of these and preset off of any of these really, even in combination with each other. But if I just hit surprise me a couple times, you can see some of the different kinds of wiggles you can get. In the next episode of this playlist, we're gonna be going over the Film Impact Tools effects, and then we're gonna be going into the new Film Impact video transitions. Make sure you subscribe, like, and check out the playlist for all the videos. Thanks for watching.